original plans were for a two-week vacation, and that was 36 years ago, so I'm still here. <laughs> Born in England, moved here after leaving school. I always wanted to come to New Orleans. It just seemed like this fairy tale place, and I'd read about it. Rhythm and blues, Professor Longhair, banana trees, the Gulf of Mexico, the Mississippi River. I mean, it sounded like something out of a kid's adventure book or something. When I got to New Orleans, I went out and heard as much music as I could and then went home and played piano for hours and hours, putting the record on at the beginning again, figuring out how all the parts went, and that's what I did. Early on in New Orleans, African sensibilities and, 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 the, and the European classical tradition came face to face and it's like tectonic plates mashing up and then all this stuff gets thrown up, this new stuff comes out of it. Rhythms that feel natural in the Caribbean feel natural here. The big thing in that world at that time was called the Habanera. And this was a new dance that came out of Cuba in the late 1800s and that swept this part of the world and even got as far as Europe and influenced classical compo composers like Bizet. And it's... This is, it's essentially this rhythm. That was really a new, sexy, funky sound at the time. It sounds dated and quite polite to us, but if you strap on the ears of a, of a teenager in 1880 and play him a, a habanera, it would be like gangster rap <laughs> for a lot of people now. This was controversial music. The old folks did thought that, man, this is not good. There used to be two bands that were really popular at one point, John Robichaud's orchestra and Buddy Bolden's band, and Buddy Bolden's band was the band that was bringing the, the funk. You have written accounts of what they, but we don't really know what they sounded like because they never made records, but you know they were good. Jump forward to Jelly Roll Morton. <laughs> Jelly Roll Morton had this famous quote that jazz has to have a, a tinge of, of Latin. And what, what he was really talking about was Cuban music. That. That's the groove, and then you go up to Professor Long here, and this becomes... He came back with two suitcases of 45s, and we'd sit there, go up to his apartment, and they, every evening would start the same way. He said, oh, you've got to hear this, you've got to hear this, and where is it? And he'd start looking for a record, and it would take about four hours until he actually found that record, but the journey in between, as he was going, he's like, oh, you've got to hear this one. And it was just this amazing education. Then you get up to guys like James Booker, and these were the guys that I learned from. I saw Booker all the time. I'd see him like three or four times a week because he played at my local bar and would hang out in the daytime playing while I was outside on a ladder with a paintbrush painting the bar. So I'd get to hear him for hours. And Booker had big hands, but he played these lovely tenths in the left hand. And I play. He had a lovely way of getting around the chords. He was, a, he was that rare animal, a classically trained musician that could get funky too. ethnic folk music of New Orleans. And it was so hip that it's now basically the, the fundamental building blocks for all jazz and modern pop music. This is where it started, right here. 